some of them. Okay. To be honest, I think that reading is my, my the hardest. Worst. Yeah. Uh, oh my heart is your weakness. Uh, yes, my weakness. I think that, uh, well, I, I did the first exercise. Yes. Where uh, you you have to identify the main topic of the paragraphs. Okay. So I, I didn't get a good grade. I mean, okay. I, 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 I think that I need some help or some extra help. I don't know. With them. Okay, uh-huh. have, have you it's... tried the the last part, the, the last box that says mini lessons? Uh, yes, but uh, some time ago. No, but the, the mini lessons for, for reading section. Ah, uh, no, not yet. Maybe those mini lessons will help you a lot because basically they are uh, formed with vocabulary used in the reading section. Uh-huh. And obviously, they are going to help you with uh, the understanding, uh-huh. the whole understanding of the readings. Yeah, there are like seventeen mini lessons. Okay, so you can practice with them, and maybe oh that, that's going to help you a lot. There are a lot of, of mini lessons, and they are only based on reading. And actually, they are like really short readings. Uh-huh. They, they are not too heavy. Okay, so, well, let's uh, start okay. first with the... I will drop this bit. Yeah. Okay, we're going to start with the, the final yeah. topics that we need to check. And at the end, depending on the time that we have, uh-huh. we will check <laughs> if, if we can do something else, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's start with me. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to check uh, factual, factual questions, negative questions, and scanning questions. Factual, negative, and scanning. Let's start with factual questions. Okay, factual questions ask about a specific mm-hmm. or explicit facts and details given in the passage. They often contain one of the WH questions words. For example, who, what, when, where, why, or how much. You know, they are um, information questions. So they are asking you about some information that was already given on the reading. Okay. Factual questions often begin with the phrases according to the passage or according to the author. So when you see these phrases... You, you should know that they are asking for information, okay? Information is going to be needed mm-hmm. as the answer. And this information is directly stated in the reading, okay? And that, that is different from inference questions. We already checked inference questions where which their answers mm-hmm. are things that are not mentioned in the reading, okay? Okay. To answer factual questions, you have to locate and identify the information that the questions ask. If you are not sure from your first reading where to look for specific answers, use the following scanning techniques. So I'm going to give you some tips or some techniques to improve your scanning when you're reading. Number one, you should focus on one or two keywords as you read the theme of each question. Look for these questions in your mind. So always focus on keywords, okay? Read the answer Mm -hmm. choices and identify some keywords and look for those keywords on the the lecture, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, you should scan the passage looking for the keywords or, or, this is important, or their synonyms. Okay, normally... Or what? Or the synonyms. Okay, so mm-hmm. maybe you're reading um, the lecture and you will not find exactly the same words, but maybe you will find synonyms on the lecture. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
So remember, where is Kenny? Okay, in this, this type of questions, it's easier if you scan the reading, not read the reading. Okay, you're just scanning, like okay. when you're reading a dictionary, you don't read all the words. You're just scanning, looking for one or two words. Okay, <laughs> it might help you to use the eraser or the, the, your finger if you're doing the online exam. Okay, use your eraser to to point. Okay, where you find the words. And don't reread the passage completely. If you reread the, the lecture one more time, you are just going to waste time. Okay? You are just scanning, looking for these words. Okay? When you find the keywords in the passage, carefully read the sentence in which they occur. You might have to read the sentence preceding or following that sentence as well. So sometimes it's not only um, enough to read just the sentence when you found the information. Maybe you need to read the previous and the following sentences, okay? But first, scan. Okay. After, when you find the synonym or the word or the keywords, now read the, the previous and following sentence. Okay. And finally, compare the information you read with the four answer choices. So, the, the order is Focus on keywords, scan for the keywords or synonyms. Mm -hmm. Do not reread, just scan. Then read the previous and following sentence. And finally, compare with the answer choices, okay? Okay. Now, remember that normally, normally all questions appear in order. So question one, well, we already checked that question one normally refers to an infer question, inference question. So you need to understand the whole reading. But question two normally corresponds to the first paragraph of the reading. Question three corresponds to the second paragraph. Question four corresponds to the third paragraph and so on. Okay, so they appear in order. Mm -hmm. So keep this in mind when you're looking for keywords. If you already answer one of these factual questions in paragraph number two. So the next factual question is not going to be before paragraph number two or in number two, okay? Now, finally, correct answers are okay. seldom exactly the words in the passage, okay? As we said, they normally use synonyms and different grammatical structures. So you will not find the, the answer choices exactly word by word on the reading. Okay, maybe in, in, in the lecture, the sentence is in active voice and the answer choices are in passive voice. Okay, that would be a different grammatical structure. Or they are only using different <laughs> words, that means the same. Okay? Questions here? No. no perfect. Now, about negative questions. These negative questions normally will contain the words not, except, or least. And when we find these questions, it's because we're looking for some information that was not important, that was not in the lecture. Okay? It's information that wasn't mentioned in the lecture. Normally, these questions starts or are like according to the passage all of the following are true except or which of the following is not mentioned in the passage or maybe which of the following is the least likely to be mentioned in the paragraph okay or something like that so when you find these words not except or least it means that you're looking for the answer is going to be something that is not mentioned in the lecture Okay, and this is important. Um, all these words, not except and least, are always capitalized on the answer choice, on the questions. Okay. Okay. <laughs> questions here yes. about about these negative questions. No. No. Perfect. Now, how can we answer these these negative questions? Number one. You should scan, one more time, we're going to scan the passage to find the answers that are mentioned. 
Okay, first we, sh we should find the information that is mentioned in the paragraph or in the, in the lecture. Obviously the correct answer is not. So if you cannot find one answer, one answer choice on the lecture, that is your answer, okay? Negative questions. Negative questions often take more time than other questions. Therefore, you might want to guess and come back to these questions if you have time. So if you're taking too much time in a question, remember, we said that you should not spend more than one minute in every question. So if you realize that you're taking a lot of time to answer that question, it's better to guess, mark the answer choice or mark your answer. And then if you have time at the end, go back and correct it. Okay. The TOEFL exam and the, the exercises on the platform allows you to mark questions so you can go back later. Did you know that? Get in? Yes. Did you know that? Uh, the sound? <laughs> I was waiting for you for your the, the sound goes went away. Oh, really? you say? Yeah, it, it went went off or went off. Mm -hmm. Okay, went don't off. worry. Um I don't know. Uh, did you hear the first two options? Scan and correct answer, does not appear? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. No, I was telling you that these type of questions usually take a lot of time to students to answer. Mm -hmm. And remember that we checked that Normally, you should not take more than one minute per question. Mm -hmm. So if you realized that you're taking a lot of time to answer these questions, just guess, mark mm -hmm. the question, and then at the end, if you have time, you can go back and mm -hmm. correct the, the answer choice, okay? Okay. So... One minute is two. Yeah, that would be perfect. Obviously, let's say that you're answering, there are 10 questions per, per reading. Okay, you have uh -huh. five readings and you have 10 questions per reading. Remember, okay, uh, we have 10 readings. Uh -huh. 10 readings. And with every reading, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We don't have 10, we have five. We have five readings. And in every reading, we have 10 questions. So in total, we have 50 questions. So yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And you have in total for this section, you have 55 minutes. <laughs> so if you take one minute per questions, one minute per question, you will finish at 50 minutes and you will have five minutes extra to check your answers. Okay. Okay. So that's why I recommend you okay. to take no more than one minute per question. So you don't ha you have enough time to answer all the readings. Okay. In this case, okay. obviously, if let's say that you answer the first question, the first and second question in one minute. So you have one extra minute. You can use that minute to, to continue uh -huh. with the with these factual questions, which is possible. Okay, but if you realize that mm -hmm. you're taking more than one minute and you don't have extra time, just guess and keep going. And at the end, remember that you have five minutes extra to go back and correct mm -hmm. all those questions where you were taking too much time. Okay. But, but I was asking you if you knew that in the TOEFL exam, mm -hmm. There is, um, 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 how can I call it? There is um, a button, yes, that uh -huh. you can click and, and that button marks your question. So at the end, you can go back to the marked questions to correct them. And you don't have to be like looking for them. Okay, uh -huh. I, if I'm not wrong, in the top of the there is like a flag. It's a red flag. Mm -hmm. Something like this, and actually, in the but only if yes? you take it online, 
Yes, if you take it online. If you are not taking your, your exam online, if you are taking it on paper, um, you can also mark mm -hmm. with your pencil. Just remember that at the end, you have to erase all those marks. Erase everything. Okay, yes. Well, yes. Okay. But it's, well, in this case, to mark them, it's as easy as just to, I don't know, um, to, to maybe to, to not fill in like very dark. You know that you have some circles and you have to select. Mm -hmm. have, uh, on your answer sheet, you have the options, right? A, B, C, etc. Okay, so what? Remember that you have to mm -hmm. always answer this answer sheet, and you have to fill in all the circle. So maybe what you can do is just like mark it this way, and that's it. You know that this answer you are not mm -hmm. really sure, and you need to go back to this. And if you do something like this, you will not have to erase anything at the end, just in case the answer choice was wrong. Okay. Okay. So this is a simple way to mark on your answer sheet what what the answer could be, or to mark them as a doubt question. Okay. On the okay. on the platform on the exercises and the exams, you also have this flag. There is a button with this flag that says mark question. So you can also mark the questions, and at the end you can go back to the marked or flagged questions. Go right? back to them. Yes. Okay. You have also this this uh, button on the on the platform, so you can do this. Okay. Okay. So that's what you should do. Mm -hmm. Do not spend more than one minute in every question. If you are taking more time, mark the question and keep going. Okay. Now, this type of there are normally from three to six. From three to six negative questions per reading section. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the whole rating section. About from 50, we have 50, 55 minutes, and I'm sorry, we have 50 questions in total. Mm -hmm. Okay. So three to six of these questions are going to be negative questions. Okay. So they have? Yeah, they are. No, 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 no. I'm talking about in total. Okay. Because we're talking about the section, not the, the reading. Uh, okay. Yeah, you have 50 questions and only three are negative or six. Three or six are negative. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there are not too many. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I continue with the scanning questions? Yes, please. Perfect. So uh, these questions ask you to find where in the passage some particular information and transition is located. Okay, they are easy to identify. The answers are usually line numbers. So normally in these questions, the, the answer choices are, for example, letter A, and it says line seven. Option B, and it says line nine or something like that. So you're going to identify these type of questions mm -hmm. because the answer choices say the number of line. Okay, so they are very easy to identify uh -huh. because you don't have to look on all the reading. You just have to identify mm -hmm. the number of, of the of the line and keep going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. the scanning questions are often the last question in a set of questions about a passage. Okay, so num normally this is going to be the question number ten. Okay. okay. To answer these questions, use the same technique for scanning. Remember, you have to look for words or specific words, but in this case, you are not going to focus or look for keywords on the answer choices because the answer choices says line seven, line nine, line 15, etc. You have to look for keywords on the question. Okay. Yeah. You read the question, okay. select some keywords and look for those keywords on the reading. Okay. Now, how are the questions? Well, the questions are like, in what line does the author shift his focus to something? Where uh -huh. in the passage does the author first discuss? A description of something can be found in line seven, line three, etc. 
Where in the passage does the author specifically stress? And in what paragraph does the author first mention the concept of something? Okay, so mm -hmm. obviously you are not going to select any of the words that are right now on your screen cannot be keywords. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, well, actually the keyword is going to be what what is like the here. Okay, after these questions. So do not look for the word shift because that is not going to be correct. Do not look for the words, for example, stress, because that is not going to be mentioned in the paragraph. Okay, what is going to be next? For example, it says, where in the passage does the author specifically stress um, his, his posture? Okay, his posture about abortion. Okay, so abortion could be the keyword. Okay. Maybe in the reading he was okay. talking about euthanasia and abortion and adoption. And in this case, well, you are uh -huh. looking for abortion, not the other words. Okay. Yeah. Questions here? No. Yeah. Perfect. Now, inference questions and purpose questions. Inference questions are your weakness, right? Yes. So let's check how to, how to answer this type of in inference questions. So mm -hmm. in this case, the answers to these questions, as we already said before, they are not directly provided in the passage. So you, you must read between lines. Okay, you need to understand what the author is saying because they are not going to be mentioned. So in other words, you must make conclusions based indirectly on information in the passage. You're going to answer with your own conclusions. Inference questions might mm -hmm. be phrased in a number of ways. Many of these questions contain some, some form of the words infer or imply. So you might identify these questions if the questions contain one of these words. Okay, infer or imply. For example, which of the following can be inferred from the passage? It can be inferred from the passage that the author implies that. Which of the following does the passage imply? Which of the following would be the most reasonable guess about? In this case, it would be reasonable guess. The author suggests that and it is probable that, so as you can see, not always, you will not always find the words infer and imply. You might also find other forms of these questions like reasonable guess, suggest, or probable. But as you can see, the questions are not talking about something that was mentioned in the paragraph or in the lecture. It's about something that you must infer, obviously. Okay? Okay. For example, here we have a reading. The star very similar to the sun is one of the nearest stars to Earth. That star is Alpha Centauri, just 4.3 light years away. Other than our own sun, the nearest star to the Earth is a tiny red star, not visible without a telescope, called Proxima Centauri. The question is, it can be inferred from this passage that here we have the readings. Which which do you have? Which one do you think is the right answer? Uh, okay, let me. Yes. Read. Sure.
Pro Proxima Centauri is the closest star to the Earth. So you think it's letter B? Ah, uh, well. That's your answer? No, you, you said that it, it must be inferred, right? Yes, inferred. Uh, Mm. Alpha Centauri is invisible from the Earth. That's your answer? Yes. Yes, very good. Yes, it's correct. I'm sorry, wait, wait a second. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a second. I think it was my mistake. Just for the... No, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. It was my mistake. You were right. There you go. Uh, okay. Yeah, yo seleccioné las dos, por eso fue, ¿qué? Espérame. No, 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 you're right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. And as you can see, it, it says... Me <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It was my, my fault. Okay. Yeah, por eso aparecen las dos seleccionadas. <laughs> sorry. Um, now, let's go to purpose questions. Okay, purpose questions. These questions ask why the author of a passage mentions some piece of information, includes a quotation from a person or a study, or uses some particular word or phrase. Okay, you know what is quotation? Yes. Okay, so these questions normally have quotation on the questions. For example, <laughs> why does the author mention, and in quotes, we have here a phrase. Okay, so we need to look mm -hmm. for this phrase and when they are put in, in quotes, it means that it's it's exactly the same phrase that was on the reading, okay? okay? So the questions could be like, why does the author mention something? Does, I'm sorry, the author refers to something to indicate that the author quotes something in order to show or the phrase in line something is mentioned to illustrate the effect of so they are giving you exactly the same phrase that was mentioned on the reading but mm -hmm. you need to 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 mention or the answer is going to be the purpose or of using that phrase on the photograph okay mm -hmm. So normally these answer choices are going to be like uh, to a strand that argument, the argument that blah, 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 to provide an example of something, to challenge the idea that, to contradict something, or to, to support the proposal too. Obviously here you will continue with the answer. Mm -hmm. These are the structure of the answer choices, okay? Yes. Questions with purpose questions? No. No, very good. Now, vocabulary in context questions. No, vocabulary yes. in context. Okay, these questions, for, to answer these questions, okay, you have to substitute a word, okay, for or words in a passage so you can understand it. It says, you must determine which answer choice can best substitute for a word or words in the passage. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the answer choices are words that can substitute a word in the reading. Most of these questions ask about single words, normally nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. Mm -hmm. Some ask about two or three word phrases. And sometimes two or more of the answer choices for these items might be correct. Definitions of the word that is asked about it. About, in those cases, you must decide which is correct in the context of the passage. Let me give you an example. It says, um, 
Luis is my teacher. And his daughter. And well, and he has a daughter. Let's say who is blonde. Okay. So let's say that you have this this phrase is in the lecture. So this is my teacher and he has a daughter who is blonde. Okay. Now it's uh, the question says uh, how how can you replace or which word better substitutes the the word who the word who on this phrase. This is my teacher and he has a daughter. And you have four answer choices, obviously. You have, for example, mm -hmm. he, she, uh, her, or his. Can you tell me which one uh -huh. substitutes who? So, Luis is my teacher and he has a daughter who is blonde. So, I have to re substitute replace, yes, the word who? The relative pronoun? Yes, with one uh -huh. of these four options. He, she, her, or his. Okay. Which one? That's right. Yeah. So that's what you have to do. You will have to select which one, which of these words could be used instead of the word on the reading. Okay. Obviously, this who refers to the daughter does not refer to the teacher. So as we're talking about a girl, we should use she. And obviously, her and his are positive adjectives with which which we can eliminate, and this he could be the main distractor. Okay, so we have the distractor, we have the, the right answer, which is she, and two more options, which are obviously incorrect. So when you have to substitute these answer choices and you don't know which could be the answer, just reread the sentence and replace the, the options in the sentence. If you don't know the answer, you should do. Luis is my teacher and he has a daughter. He is blonde. And like, oh, he is blonde. Okay, could be. Luis is my teacher and he has a daughter. She is blonde. Ah, okay, maybe that's the one. Luis is my teacher and he has a daughter. Her is blonde. Ah, it doesn't sound good to me. Luis is my teacher and he has a daughter. His is blonde. Ah, uh -uh, not correct. Mm -hmm. So that's what you should do to answer these questions if you don't know the answer. Okay. Okay. So what you can do is to look for clues in reading. We're going to look for these clues. Number one, we have synonyms. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. it says the first state to institute compulsory education was Massachusetts, which made it mandatory for students to attend school 12 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this case, we're looking for synonyms, and here the word mandatory is a synonym for the word compulsory. Okay. Okay. So this will help you to, to find the word mandatory is a synonym for the word compulsory. compulsory. That's right. Mm -hmm. Compulsory. You should also look for examples okay for for example many gardeners use some kind of mulch such as chopped leaves pet moss grass clipping pine needles or wood chips in order to stop the growth of weeds and to hold in moisture so in this case 
the reading is giving you examples. It's giving you the examples as chopped leaves, pet moss, grass clipping, pine needles, or wood chips. Okay, so these are examples. You should, mm -hmm. let's say that you should substitute the word mulch. Do you know what's the meaning of mulch? Maybe. Hey, no. no. You don't know. I don't even know the meaning of mulch either. When you, mm. well, normally these kind of, of, of questions make you th this type of, uses this type of vocabulary. Did you know before today the meaning of the word compulsory? Yes, I... You have heard it? I have heard it. Okay. So but I didn't remember the meaning. The meaning. So in this case, imagine that in the exam, it says, which word can better substitute the, the word compulsory? Okay, so you if you keep reading, you are going to find synonyms. In this case, we find the word mandatory. So you can use, you can find the word um, that can substitute compulsory. It's the same here. You have to substitute the word mulch, but you don't know the meaning of the word mulch. So if you keep reading, you will find examples which will tell you what's the meaning of mulch. And mulch means plant matter. So we can substitute the word mulch with the option plant matter. Yes? Yeah. It's like materia organica, vegetal. Okay. Another thing that could help you would would be to focus on contrast, okay? For example, in the 1820s, the Southern states support environments in the national transportation system, but the Northern states balked. Okay, so in this case, mm -hmm. yeah. In this case, if they ask you about how can you better substitute the word bulked? Do you know what bulked is? Bulked. No. Okay, that's that's why it's kind of difficult because in the TOEFL they are always going to use not very common words. And you have to substitute the word bulk and, and that word, the, the, the weird word for us. But in this case, even if you don't know the meaning of bulked, you know that as we're expressing contrast, because we have the word but, it should be, the, the meaning should be the opposite to the first sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, it's saying that the Southern states supported improvements. And since a word signaling conscious bust is used, it is clear that the Northern states disagreed with this idea and that the word bulked must be mean objected or refused. Okay. So in this case, we're saying um, in the 1820s, the Southern states supported, supported improvements. Okay, so they, they were like, they agreed with these improvements. And it says, but the Northern states balked. So it's obviously the opposite to support and as we're talking about support improvements, it should be object or refused. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. You should also look for general context. For example, in a desert vegetation, is as scanty as to be impossible, incapable of supporting any large human population. So, which mm -hmm. word better substitutes is canty? Uh, uh, but the options? Ah, well, it's, are, there, are, there are no options here in this type of exercises. It just gives you the answer. We're looking for general context, okay? And uh, in this case... Maybe it's uh, scanty, it's like desert, like... Yes. The back or... 
Um, can, can you imagine uh, how yeah. is vegetation in a desert? You don't know what is a scanty, right? But you know no, what is a desert. But because of the context. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh, yes. So just imagine, uh, imagine uh, putting your head the image of a desert and imagine how many vegetation is there in a desert. So we are obviously. Um, we're referring to desert, so we said vegetation is so scanty. So how can we? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sorry. How can we change? Okay, what word better substitutes the word scanty? Well, we now understand that scanty can mean scarce or barely sufficient. There is not many. There is not a uh, very little vegetation, but there is enough for the animals that live there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can understand the meaning of a word according to the context. Okay. So let me, uh -huh. before I continue with this, um, let's make a summary. So to answer vocabulary and context questions, number one, we should look for synonyms on the reading. Examples, contrast, mm -hmm. or general context. Okay? okay? Because I repeat, normally they use very um, unusual words for these type of questions. But the idea is, is that even if you don't know the meaning of the word, you should also understand the reading and select the best yeah. answer. Okay? Okay. Now, what you sh what should you do to answer these type of questions? Number one, you should look at the at, at the word being asked about and the four answer choices. Okay, let's say that you read scanty and you read the, the four answer choices. If you are familiar with the word, guess which answer is correct. Do, but do not answer it yet. Okay. Sometimes you <laughs> might read the let's say that you have which word better substitutes the word furious on the reading? And you have the options, mad, angry, happy, sad. I'm like, okay, angry, angry better answers, mm -hmm. furious. Okay, so if, if you already know the meaning of the word, it's going to be easier for you to answer the, the, this question. Okay, but if you don't, then look for the clues that we have just mentioned, okay? But okay. even though you think the which answer is correct you should not just mark the answer you should read the sentence in which the word appears because you know that english words do not have only one meaning okay mm -hmm. so you should make sure that the word that you think it's the answer is correct okay okay Okay, let's, I'm, I'm thinking in an example, like for example, drive, okay? Let's say that it says, um, I love that girl, she's driving me crazy, or, yeah, she's driving mm -hmm. me crazy. And you think that, well, do you know that drive, what, what, what is the meaning of yes, drive? Yes, So you, sh you might think that it, it's commute. That's you like it very much. That's right. But actually it has a different meaning, so... Do not only answer because you know the, the meaning of the word. Always read the sentence and then decide which could be the answer. Okay? Okay. Then number three. Use in the sentence. Okay? As, as we said before, I said with the example, uh, uh, Luis is my teacher. He has a daughter. He is blonde. It's not. Okay. Read the sentence again. This is my teacher, he has a daughter, she is blonde, etc. So you are replacing the word on the reading so you can identify which one looks more familiar, which one looks more correct, okay? Mm -hmm. So use the, the, answer, the answer choices on the sentence. Okay, uh, if you are not sure, if you're not sure which answer is correct, read the sentence with each of the four answer choices. Well, that's what I'm just saying. Uh, does one seem more logical, given the context in the sentence, than the other three? If not, do any seem illogical? So those you can eliminate. That's just what I have just 
set. Okay. Mm -hmm. And finally, if you don't know the answer, remember you should always guess. Do not leave any question in blank. Okay. So it is important on this section because it's the last section that if you notice that you're running out of time, mm -hmm. just answer everything. Answer. Just answer all the questions and then just you like go back. Guessing. Yes, yes. Okay. There are more chances to get one correct at least than not getting any. Okay. Okay. Questions about this type of questions? About vocabulary uh, questions? No. Nope. You know, yep. in this part of the reading that uh, I mentioned, that I told you before, yeah. that the, at the beginning of the, of the section was called the main topic yes. yeah. of the paragraph, so something like uh -huh. that. But no, te lo juro que no, no sé cómo decirlo en inglés, pero no digo una, o sea, todo eso era, you had to, uh, to put correct, incorrect, irrelevant, uh -huh. and there was another one. And for me, uh, if, if it was uh, correct, uh -huh. it, it wasn't, it was <laughs> okay. wrong. It was something very different, uh, uh, but I, I had answered it. Okay. Yeah, I had answered. I, I think time. that I should check your your exercises to see if, if there is like a pattern mm -hmm. that tells me what, what you're doing wrong. Okay, remember that sometimes, or in the top of exam, you might find maybe just one word modifies completely the meaning of the sentence. You know, yes. like negative words. Remember that we checked the negative words, mm -hmm. and even though they are, they they don't say something like "not." Just because the word is in that sentence, the meaning is completely different. I mean, it's, uh -huh. I think that maybe that could be one of your mistakes because just with the example that you just gave me, okay, that you select that is incorrect and it is totally the opposite. So that could yes. be. That could be. Just be careful with all the words. Okay? Because yeah. I have, remember, actually, I don't have these lights here right now. Um, but, for example, remember that we actually, it was in that class. Last class, we checked uh -huh. specifically that. Um, and we were saying, I, I, I gave you one example. And uh -huh. my question was, uh, which are the positive words? Which words give you a, a positive meaning? And remember uh -huh. that they said something like, um, the, the, I don't know, the, the play was beautiful and popular. So you said, okay, beautiful and popular are good adjectives. <laughs> okay. They are positive adjectives. That's right. But after that, that phrase, they said something like, the play was beautiful and popular. Anyways, um, cats has never been. Oh worst okay mm -hmm. so even though in this case we have the phrase anyways so we are not saying something positive about the play we're saying something negative it doesn't matter if it was beautiful and popular it's it's saying actually that it was not good or mm -hmm. good enough okay so those keywords changes completely the meaning of of, of what the author is saying and as you're talking about infer, is what you understand. So if you're just taking the positive compliments about something, you're wrong. Okay? Yes. So you should, I, actually, I think maybe we have time to check that also. Yeah, okay. we still have enough time. Yes. Yeah, we will go back when we're finished. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Um, now let's go to reference questions. Okay, reference questions. Mm -hmm. Reference questions are the ones that you have to look the line. I'm sorry? The reference question, questions are the ones you have to, no. No, to no, go no. back to the line and, search and say where. No. The, no? Huh? no, reference questions are always about pronouns. Um, okay, so they, they are about like 
what does this pronoun refers to? Okay, yeah, it says, uh, reference oh. questions ask what noun? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. Yes, what noun are we referring with a pronoun? Okay, so the correct answer is not always the noun that is closest to the pronoun in the passage. Incorrect choices are usually other nouns that appear in the passage. Okay, so we're talking about pronouns and nouns. And these answers or these questions are always like, um, what noun does the pronoun it on line seven refers to? Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously you need to read um, that li line seven, but read maybe the previous sentence and identify wh who are they talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you're unable to decide immediately which answer is correct, substitute the four choices for the word that is being asked about. Which one is the most logical to substitute? Okay, let me think in an example because I don't have any there. Okay, um, let's say for example, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to write it to not waste too much time drawing the sentence. There we go. So here we have an example. Okay, just something that came to my mind. Obviously, it's not something real. It says, mm -hmm. astronauts have visited many planets. All of them have been dusty and hot. So the question is, what um, noun does the pronoun them refers to? Okay, so who are we talking about with the word them? Are we talking about the astronauts or the planets? The planets. That's right. And obviously because of, of the adjectives here. Okay, because astronauts cannot be dusty. Or maybe they can be hot, but they are not dusty. Okay, and let's say exactly the same example, but what happens if I say... Astronauts have visited many planets. All of them have returned um, crazy. Okay. So as you can see, basically, the, the structure of the sentence is exactly the same. But obviously, because of the context, mm -hmm. we are not talking about the planets. We're talking about the astronauts mm -hmm. here. Astronauts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. how it works. These reference questions refer to, to well, or ask you about which noun does any pronoun refers. Okay. Okay. Do you yes. have? Well, yes. Well, in those examples, it's very simple or yeah, uh, <laughs> well, even logical. Yeah. But in the readings, I mean, it's it's very. It's kind of yes. It's a little bit more complicated. Yes. Yes, well. you, you also have to reread the paragraph. Yeah. And you know, sometimes also they use this like um, nouns which might look plural or singular. Let's say here I have astronauts, which is in plural, and planets, which is in plural. So obviously, them could mm -hmm. be both. Okay. But uh -huh. what if I do not say something that is in plural, both in plural? Let's say, for example, that we have. 
um, my girl has three dogs. They are black. So obviously here we're talking in plural, but they and we're referring to the dogs. Okay, so this is like really mm -hmm. obvious. But what the double exam sometimes does is to use words that might seem wrong. For example, my girl has some fish. Okay. And I'm gonna modify mm -hmm. this one. My girls have have some fish. And then it says they are black. So on, on your first side, when you read the sentence, like it's like very obvious. Okay, I'm gonna change black for big. Okay. This is like kinda obvious that when we use they, we're talking about the girls because girls is plural and we're using a pronoun they. Fish is singular, so it should be it if we we're talking about a fish. Should be. Okay, but actually, mm -hmm. they is referring to fish. Remember that fish is the same yes. word for plural? Fish, uh -huh. yes, I remember. So fish is actually in plural too. And we can identify or we can know yeah. that fish is in plural because of the word some. So they mm -hmm. is still referring to fish. Okay? So this is like one of yes. the tactics that the TOEFL uses. They, they use nouns that might seem singular or plural, even when they are not. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe yeah. uh, it could be the same with, for example, men. And there are some students that obviously do not know that men is, is, is plural. They yeah. might think it's singular. And if they see a, another word in, like, my parents, so they are going to think, okay, they refers to parents because parents is in plural. Because men has no S, but that is not correct. So the, the TOEFL tries to confuse you with these kind of words, okay? Or words, words that have no plural, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, let me think in one, like, for example, um, the band was amazing. All the musicians, uh, let me say, um, singing, um, let me think of a song, um, let it be. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's it's a little bit more difficult than the previous ones. Like it says, the band was amazing. All the musicians were singing "Let It Be." It was the best I have heard. So, what noun is the word "it" referring to? I'm sorry. Well, uh... let me tell you the musicians or the band. Let it be the band. Uh, maybe, maybe the band. That's right. We're talking about the band. We're not talking about let it be. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the song. Okay, at the beginning I said that the band was amazing. So obviously when I said that it was mm -hmm. the best I have heard, I'm talking, I'm still talking about the band. I'm not talking about, if, 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 if it said something like, it was the best, um, how can I say it? Um, how do you say when you uh, cover? Mm -hmm. It was the best cover I have heard. So in this case, yeah. we are not talking yeah. about the band. Mm -hmm. We're talking about let it be. Good. The song. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I only yes. add one word, the word cover. Can you see? Now it does not refer to the band. Now it refers to let it be. 
Yes. So number one, one more time, it. It's obviously referring to something. And you know that the band, maybe the people might think that band is plural because we're talking about many people in a band. But band is a singular noun. Band is um, mm -hmm. is substituted by a, a singular pronoun, it, in this case. Okay? Okay. So that those are the kind of uh, tactics that the TOEFL uses. Plural singular nouns to make more confusing this this type of questions. Yep. Yes. Do you have any questions here? No. Guess what? No, I... We're done. We're done. Yes, that's that's the last type of question that we have here. Okay, now no, no. <laughs> we still have time and there is something that I want to explain you before we we finally finish for real. Uh -huh. Number one, okay, at the end of your course, you have this, this part, let me make it there. Number one, it says final practice test, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to do final practice two, okay? This is the one that you have to do. This TOEFL practice test mm -hmm. three is the one that you did when you started the course, Okay, so you have already done this one. Sorry. Uh, but double okay. practice two is the one that you have to do now. Okay? Now, okay. Also, so, yes, tell me. Uh -huh. Which one? Sorry. The, yep. the, the first. What is the, number one? What is the one that I. I the one that you did? It was double. Let, let me show you on the platform. Okay. Como está bien chiquitito, casi no veo. Sure, give me just a second. Sorry, Yenin, this is like really slow. <laughs> okay, if you remember when you started the course first, I, well, well the school yeah, enables you uh, I, an exam. Yeah? The other day, the other day I was doing the... The what? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, the other day you were doing what? No, the sound is uh, like fading. I can't ah. sure what it is. Yeah, I think that maybe it's my computer. As you can see, it's not working properly. Not working. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that they hear me now. Can you hear me? Okay, let me give me just a second. I need to turn on my camera so you can see me and see if I'm, a, I'm a speaking or not. Can you hear me now? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. Yes, now yes. Okay. So let me show you for me. What? I'm not saying anything. Um, <laughs> Can you see it? Sure. 
Janine, are you there? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I can hear you. Perfect. Yes. Now we're back. Okay. So I was telling you when you start the course, when you yes, started the course, um, we enabled you an exam. Yes. Okay. The exam was um, apart from the course. Remember? Actually, you should still have access to that exam. Yes. You are not able to answer that exam because you were. Yes, it is. You only have one attempt. Remember? <laughs> Good. Now you can practice uh -huh. the same exam again, and that exam is TOEFL practice test three. The one right here. If you want to practice exactly the same exam that you did uh -huh. before the course, that's this one. Okay, TOEFL practice test three. And if you enter uh -huh. here, you will be able to do the exam as many times as you wish. Okay. Uh -huh. So as you already did TOEFL practice test three, now I'm asking you to do TOEFL practice test two. Uh -huh. Okay, as soon as you as you can. Obviously, first try to do the exercises that you, that you're missing, uh -huh. and then do, do the TOEFL practice test too. Uh huh. Then we are going to evaluate it, and we are also going to send you the the results so you can see your improvement. Okay. Now, okay. maybe the question is, where is okay. TOEFL practice test one, right? Here it is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. If you go to the um, to the um, platform and you enter to this, let me go back. If you enter to this one, to TOEFL practice test on PDF here, uh -huh. if you click in here, you will see this screen. Uh-huh. And here you will find practice test one on PDF. Also, practice test two and practice test three. The exams are exactly the same. Number two and three are exactly the same that are on the platform. But these are on PDF, so you can download them and do it whenever you want on paper. Mm -hmm. Okay? Obviously, you also need the audios because you need to play the audio mm -hmm. as you're doing the exam. So, if you want to do the the, the TOEFL practice exams by your own on paper, the first thing you need to do is to download the audio files, okay? You just click on this link, click on download, and you need a password. The password uh -huh. is this. You can just copy the password, click in here. You copy the password, click in download, paste the password, uh -huh. and that's it. You are going to download the audios, for the three TOEFL practice test exams, okay? Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Now, I recommend you first okay. just download the test. Do not download the answer sheets or the answers for the tests, because in that case, if you do, you will maybe you will recognize some some answers, and we don't know what could be. So after you finish your exam. Now you download the answers for test one, two, or three, according to the one that you did, and check what answers you got, okay? Okay. As you know, when you do the TOEFL on paper, you have your exam, it's like a little book, you have your exam, and you also have your answer sheet, mm -hmm. where you just have to mark the answers, mm -hmm. because you are, you are not going to write anything on the TOEFL yes, practice. Yes, I have already uh, you have done, done it. One. Perfect. Or tried two or five. Two Perfect. Or three times, one. Okay. O sea, que ya lo hice. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, in eh, this case, eh, let's imagine. Uh -huh. Let's say that now that you already no, no. studied the, the TOEFL preparation course, let's say that if you want in the future to teach somebody else or to help somebody else to present the TOEFL exam, mm -hmm. you can apply them, mm -hmm. the exams in, on PDF, okay? You mm -hmm. can apply them the exam, here it is, just download the PDF, tell them to not write on that exam because there are like a lot of many, there are many pages and they are not um, mm -hmm. able to write on them. You can do exactly the same. Okay. And the only thing that you have to do is to download the answer sheet. And there is only one page, where they are just going to mark the answers for all the three practice tests. Okay, it's exactly the same answer sheet, okay? Okay. 
So this, the answer sheet is exactly the same for the three practice tests. Okay, mm -hmm. it's up to you if you want to so print. So they yes. are the same thing? Yeah, the answer sheet is the same for the three practice tests. Okay. But the practice test, everyone is different. But as I said, number two and number three are the same as the ones that are digitally on the platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the answers are different. And here we have the three different documents for each uh, exam. Okay. Okay. Now, when you finish these exams, how are you going to evaluate? Because they are only 100 and 140 questions, right? So how do you know what score you uh -huh. get if you have, let's say, um, 90 of 140. How can you convert this number into the TOEFL score? Okay, so to do that, you are going to download the, the Excel document here that says Calcular Resultados de TOEFL Practice Test. Just download this, this um, Excel document. I'm going to show you how to use it. And there are two options. Number one, you can use this, the sheet. It says section one rights, mm -hmm. section two rights, and section three rights. Uh -huh. So remember that every section has a different quantity of points. So we must count the correct answers mm -hmm. for every section. Okay. So I said, for example, section one, I got 25 mm -hmm. or of 35. Section two, I got, I'm sorry, I, I cannot modify this one. It's because I downloaded. Let me see if I can change the rights. So, well, I will continue talking anyways. Um, you have the, the three sections and you need to count the right answers for every question. Okay, for question, for section one, section two, and section three separately. So let's say section one, I got 25 results. Twenty-five results, twenty-five correct answers. Section two. Here we go. Now I can modify this document. Sorry. Okay, so here it says the number must be from zero to fifty. Okay, so you can only get from zero to fifty answers here. Mm -hmm. So let's say that I got twenty-five. Now, on section number two, the, num mm -hmm. the number must be from zero to 40. Okay, there are no more than 40 questions in section number two. So let's say that I got 30. And from section, section three, the number, it goes from zero to 50. Let's say that I got uh, 35. And this is my score. On the TOEFL exam, I will get 495 points. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's as simple as this. Now. This is one option. You can calculate your score using this chart. Or you can go here. And here at, at the bottom it says count rights test one, count rights test two, and count rights test three. So obviously, if you are if you presented the, um, the, the test number one, so you're going to use this, this answer sheet. Okay. So, you know, let, let me tell you, this is going to be a little bit complicated if you are checking the answer sheet and you say, okay, it's letter A is the answer and letter B yes. is the answer. And you have to compare with every paper. So that's why you have this Excel document and you are only going to copy the answer choices mm -hmm. here. So on your answer sheet, you have A, B, C, D, and you're going to write here A, B, C, D, and so on. Mm -hmm. You just write uh, uh, the, yeah. the options, okay? 
A, B, etc. And mm -hmm. at the end, it's going to tell you, for example, from these four, C, D, A, B, I only got I only got one correct. Can you see? The Excel document it's already mm -hmm. programmed to identify which answer is correct and which one is not. So you should all only let's say here A A A A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, sorry. But the easiest is to do it. Well, yeah. In this case, platform, you should. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's it's pretty much easier to do it on the platform because, well, not exactly. No, it's gonna be the same. Yeah, I'm sorry. Why? Because when you do that, that's actually why I had it open here. Let me see if I can see it now. When you present the exam here on the platform, when you finish the exam, you will find something like this. Or you can enter and review your answer choices. And as you can see, well, first, number one, all the audios are going to be reproduced at the same time. You know, when you did the first exam, it happened to you, maybe, at the same time. And on Come on. Okay, can you hear me now? Luis? Yes, I'm here. Are you? Come on. Okay, I want to do this. I think that it's... I yes, uh, the yeah. thing is that the sound is like getting cut. And I, the last part, I didn't hear it very well. Don't worry about it.
I'm back. Are you still there? Here we go. Thanks. Yes, I'm back. Can you hear me? I think it's working. Oh, yes. Sorry, I have never learned. Every every time, every time I'm on class and, and with with Goldmeet, and at the same time I'm using the platform. I don't know why, but it crashes. So I had to close the the platform so we can continue with the. Video. Every time. Yeah, every time I I have on um um ah, I, I, Did you close the platform? Yes. And the. When I open the platform while I'm having a video call, I have this this problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I keep still doing the same thing when I know that it, I shouldn't. Uh, Sorry, it was my mistake. I, before we finish, yeah. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Before we finish the class, can we what? Ah, uh, mira, es que I, I was um, too... Sorry. Can we check some exercises? Because I took some screenshots. Yes. But I think um, I'm going to be very brief. Don't worry. Um, I mean, we have already the finished... Topic. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know the uh, number of, of the exercise, but I can I can read it. Perfect. It's yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Kind of, not really good. But <laughs> let me tell you something. I don't know if it has something to do with what you were saying, because I just heard some parts of it. Um, we finished today with um, uh -huh. with the classes with the video uh -huh. calls or leap classes. But we will still have access to the WhatsApp group. So mm -hmm. no matter the time, if you keep doing your exercises and you have a mistake or you find a mistake or you have uh -huh. a question, uh -huh. be free. Feel free to send any question you want and I will keep answering your messages, okay? So don't worry. Um, we uh -huh. will not have the leave classes anymore, but I will still be in touch with you if you have any questions uh, on the about uh -huh. the platform or the course or whatever, okay? Well, I will send you the... Sure, 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 sure. Okay, so I was uh, saying... Okay. Thank you, Liz. I'm going to send you the questions I have. Yes, Janine, feel uh, free to do it. On the questions I, I took. Yes. And remember that you still have access, uh, you will have access to the course for a whole mm -hmm. year. I mean, the, the answers. I, yeah. have, I have, sorry, I have, I have them wrong. Okay. And I don't know. You don't know why. Yeah, send them and I will let you know why that answer is not correct. Yes. Sure. Yes. That... You know what? I'm going to turn off my camera. Maybe that's going to make okay. this faster too. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, maybe the camera is it. Yeah, maybe it's also. You know, as oh. I'm recording the class and I'm having the video call and I have PowerPoint, Excel, and everything opened, maybe it's not a really good match. Okay, you send me one screenshot, two screenshots. Okay. There is it's, it's okay, Janine. Um, you're sending mm -hmm. me some. Yes. You're sending me some screenshots. If I'm not wrong, I already answered yes, some of I them. Before. Okay, yeah, you already sent them before, right? 
Okay. I, I think for the screenshots. Okay, yeah. Do you want me to check them right now? There is no problem. Uh, well, if you have time, if not, well, uh, we do it later. I will. Don't worry. We can do it on. Bye. Bye. That's yeah. Sure. Don't worry. Okay. I just want to clarify something in, in the on the first screenshot you sent me. Because if I'm yeah. wrong, I already answered this question to you specifically. And I don't know if you still have questions of, of the answer. If you want, I can clarify it now. And um, let's see. You have already uh, that one. Gave I, me the explanation. I, yeah, for that one. And you is it clear already, now? It just you, you have already gave explanation. Ah, that see, one. See, see, see. That's what I was. That's why I was concerned. I said, "Okay, one more time, it's the same question." So I, I'm, I'm asking if I wasn't clear the first time. Yeah. There is no problem. I can explain it again. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Perfect. It was good. Okay. Not yet. You were clear. Perfect. So yeah, you know what? Send me all, all the rest of questions that you have, or the next, the following mistakes that you find, and I will answer all of them. Okay. No problem. Uh -huh. uh, I think the uh, first yes. two screenshots were the ones that I sent you. The, the last time, time. So yes. Forget it. Yeah, because actually, if I'm wrong, <laughs> the other one. Um, yes. It was a mistake on the platform, that one, right? The second one. But yeah, the one about the structure sections, the other, um, the last two that you sent, we haven't checked any of those. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe okay. uh, let me let me see what the mistake is, but specifically, yes. and then I ask you because maybe I am making some mistakes. Okay. Yeah. And I tell you later. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Yes. Um. And yeah, that would be good. good. Send, well, send them to the WhatsApp group. So, uh, when I answer uh -huh. your questions. We can help also your classmates, okay? They will also be able to, to know the answers or the reasons. Yeah, I, I'm not okay. telling you that you cannot send me a private message. You can't, but, but it would be better if you, we do it on the group so everyone can um, receive the help, okay? Yeah. Well, um, um, sure, yes. Janine, tell Thank me. Thank you very much. Is there Please. anything else I can help you with right now? Well, right now, no, because time is over. <laughs> but you can, you you help me a lot. That's good. I, I'm I'm glad to hear you there. And well, I, I want really to thank you it. too. Thank you. And I want to thank you too also for your trust in us and in me. Okay, I hope it it helped. The course helped, and I, yes. I wish you the best. Okay, we'll be in touch. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I I hope. Tell me. I was, going to, I was going to ask you if there are some courses <coughs> yes. available. About, if you have any other. About what? Available? Or, or about just any speaking? courses? Or reading? Okay. You know what? Actually, we are already preparing uh -huh. um, a TOEFL IBT course. I don't know if you knew that the TOEFL IBT evaluates five skills, not uh -huh. three, as a TOEFL ITP. Because TOEFL IBT also evaluates mm -hmm. reading, writing, literally writing. You have English, to write an essay speaking. and it's speaking. Uh -huh. That's right. So we are already preparing um, the TOEFL IBT course. Yes. It's going to be exactly the same. Video calls and activities on the platform. Uh -huh. um, I am preparing for that course too. I'm going uh -huh. to be the one teaching the same course. But that's going to be about TOEFL IBT. Okay. And it includes, as I said, writing and, and speaking. Um, is... It's not done yet, but if you want, I can let you know when we're going to start. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to join us, and well, mm -hmm. maybe also the school might give you like uh, some benefits because you already took this course with us or some discount. Okay. Um, perfect. I'll let you know. So you... Yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah. No, yes, that you inform. Yes, me sure. When... Because yes. Ready? Yes, I will let you. Hopefully, it's gonna be the next okay. month, but I will let you know. I'm not pretty sure. They pretend to do it for the next month. Ah, okay. Okay. 
Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you okay. again, and I wish you a wonderful night. Thank you, Janine. The same to you. Have a good night. See you around. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Ya se acabó ya, puedes dejarla llorar, no te preocupes. No está.